In this presentation, we will discuss direct and indirect expenses. When considering our responsibility accounting, we have our decentralized system. We have our organization. We have decentralized it. We now have responsibility segments. We have managers that we're holding responsible for different areas, different segments, different units, different departments of the organization. As we consider the costs that will be assigned or applied to those different units of the organizations, it's important for us to distinguish between the direct expenses and the indirect expenses. So in other words, when we are assigning costs to a specific uh, area or unit or department within an organization, we will often break them out for managerial accounting purposes by direct expenses and indirect expenses. And in some ways, we have to do it this way and we'll see why as we define direct and indirect expenses. So direct expenses are incurred for the sole benefit of a specific department. So direct expenses then are easy for us to basically assign to a specific department because they are incurred directly by that specific department. So in other words, one common example for a direct expense is a worker or an employee that works exclusively within one department. It's not difficult for us then to say, well, the wages that that earner, that worker earned should be assigned directly to that particular department. There's no question about that. Easy to do. We say, here's the cost. We know where it goes. It goes to that department. Why? Because that, wor that worker works for that department. So direct expenses are nice in that way. However, we also have indirect expenses. Indirect ex expenses benefit more than one department and must be allocated between departments that benefit from them. Now, these, of course, are the ones that are going to be more complex for the accounting department. In other words, we've got multiple departments. They all have their own kind of costs that are specific to those departments. But there's also going to be those costs that are going to be needed by the department but are going to be used by multiple different departments. Those costs are going to be more difficult they're often costs that possibly the departments themselves don't have as much control over. So when we consider controllable or uncontrollable type costs, the costs that aren't directly, aren't direct costs to the department might be costs that are going to be less controllable. And therefore, when we consider responsibility accounting, whether they have responsibility over those costs, whether we hold them accountable for those costs, possibly not. But in terms of assigning the cost to the department to consider other types of questions, such as how is the department doing overall or should we keep the department or not? Is the department providing profit uh, to the organization in general or not? We would want to assign the indirect uh, costs out oftentimes, and we need to find some method to do that. Now, if you're starting to consider how might you do that, and it's a good thought process to consider, well, what if I was confronted with this problem and I have this cost that I need to allocate to these multiple departments, let's say three departments. Let's say it's a janitorial cost. Let's say they're all in the same building and we pay the janitorial costs for that building. We want to apply those costs to the three departments. Well, you might just say if there's three departments and it will say, let's say 3,000, you could say, well, why don't we just divide it by three and apply a thousand to each department? And that would be one method that you could do. You can, you can apply out the indirect costs using that method. However, that method usually isn't used unless all the departments are even in size. And so oftentimes that's not going to be the case. One department might be a lot larger. It might take a lot more time for someone to clean one place than the other place. There might be some other way, some better way to measure. If they're different sizes, the question is, how can we allocate these costs in an appropriate way to the departments? And so we're going to have to figure out some kind of ratio analysis typically to do that. Let's first take a look at a forecasted department income statement so we can see the direct cost and indirect costs. And then we'll talk a little bit about the allocation of the indirect costs and we'll spend more time on that allocation process in future presentation. So here's going to be an example of the forecast department income statement. We got the three departments, C, M, and P, and then the totals over here. Starts out as we would expect. We have the sales minus the cost of goods sold, giving the gross profit for C, M, and P, as well as the total. And then we have the direct expenses. Now, these are the expenses that we can apply directly to the departments of C, M, and P. So we have the salaries, the advertising, the store supplies used, the depreciation, and equipment. Again, these are going to be the straightforward costs, the ones that we say, hey, this is, the, this is the amount that was incurred by that actual department. 
it's not difficult for us to apply them out. We'll, use, we'll see more examples of this as we go through future presentations and examples. Then we're gonna have the indirect costs, and these are gonna be the costs that aren't as easy to assign directly to a specific department because they're gonna be benefit multiple departments. And here, some common examples are rent and utilities. We'll take a look at more examples in the future, but the point is that if we think about something like the rent, and we have multiple departments in the one building that we are renting, then we have to, in some way, apply out the rent to the multiple departments. And so we're gonna use some type of allocation method to do that. Then we're gonna have our total expenses and our net income. Here's a quick example of a ratio analysis we may use to assign out the share of office department expenses. So if we consider the office department expenses, we may know the total, the 23,200, but we don't know how exactly to apply them out to the three departments. We could divide it by three, but maybe the three departments aren't the same in size. We need to find some method that's gonna be useful for us to apply them out. So in this example, we're gonna use sales. And that means we're gonna use sales and apply the ratio of sales by each department, use that ratio to then apply the 23,200 share of office department expenses. So we're gonna take the uh, percent of sales and this will be a common calculation. We'll do a lot more examples of this as we go. But in essence, we're gonna take C sales, 183,600, divided by the total, 360,800. And that gives us, if we move the decimal over, about 50.9%, about. And then if we take the 124,200, divided by the 360,800, we get about the 34.4. And then of course, if we take the 53,000, divided by the 360,800, we get about uh, the 14.7. So use those percentages to apply out the 23,200. So in other words, we can take the uh, 23,200 multiplied by the 50.9%, the 0 0.509 about, remember there's rounding. So it's about 11,806. Again, there's rounding involved. And if we took the 23,200 times the 0.344, we're gonna get about the 7986. Uh, and if we take the 23,200 times the 0.147, we get about the 3410, which will add up to the 23,200 that we applied out here. So that's one example. We'll take a look at some more example. Note that we used sales here. That's not always gonna be the case. That's one thing that we could use. Choosing what the activity base should be in order to allocate out the indirect cost is what going to be one of the challenges that we will need to do in order to assign out indirect costs.